Sweden and to France for burial. During their stay at Balmoral, their Majesties invited the Australian cricketers, as well as the Scottish team they'd been playing, to tea at the castle. The Australians were presented. Here the Queen is talking to Miller. The Duke of Edinburgh was there and had a chat with Don Bradman. The cricketers walked with the royal family in the grounds during this very happy and privileged occasion at the conclusion of their brilliantly successful tour. Princess Margaret with Miller and other members of the team, and the young Duke of Kent with the Australian captain. At the Aussies farewell luncheon, held in the Savoy Hotel London, a magnificent silver bowl was presented to Don Bradman by Lord Gary, MCC President, who handed it to him on behalf of subscribers from all over the country. This was a happy occasion for Don and his team, and it must have been a thrilling one indeed for the nine young cricketers chosen by Ballard to represent the schoolboys of Britain and seen listening in thrall to Norman Yardley, England's captain. Bradman, on the eve of retirement, was in a somewhat serious mood. I think there comes a time in every man's life, irrespective of whether he may still be good enough to carry on or not, that he should make way for a younger man. I feel that in my own case, and I think I'm probably the best judge of the many little creeks and groans that go on in my joints throughout the day, uh, especially when we're out in the field. And I'm quite sure I shall have no regrets at all in having to sit in the pavilion and watch the other fellows. However, I do trust that in some other capacity I may be able to serve this wonderful game for many years to come. And in conclusion, may I just say, let us all continue to work for the well-being and the prosperity of this great British heritage, cricket.